Hello. First, I want to say thank you to all of you who participated and attended my ASECT conference. I want to say thank you to each and every one of you that came up to me throughout the weekend letting me know how the workshop had inspired you to begin wondering, well, how do I help my client feel more comfortable in his or her body and how do I get them moving? And most importantly, how do I allow myself to feel more comfortable in my body? I really do believe that as therapists, clinicians, educators, whatever the title, and especially for those of us that work in sexuality, it is vital and crucial that we feel comfortable in our bodies just enough. So the more we invite ourselves to do something differently, the more we can invite our clients to do the same. I walked out of a sect inspired to share this work in ways that I never imagined. So to that I say stay tuned. I will be sending out information, videos, and different tidbits on how to incorporate this kind of practice for yourself and for your clients. In the meantime, I have an invitation for you. This is one of my favorite homework assignments to give a client. I call it a 30-day movement challenge. Now, the importance of this challenge is that it cannot be done in any wrong way. The first thing I do is ask the client if they're up for it. And most of the time I get a yes. At this time I'm assuming some of you are shaking your head yes. The second part of the invitation is to invite them to pick one song. It could be any song, minimum of length, three minutes. And I really do mean any song, from a waltz to a rockabilly song to the dirtiest hip hop you can think of. I ask them to begin the challenge by perhaps sitting down, lying down, or standing up which is usually the opposite of how people start dancing. I then ask them to be curious, to slow down enough to see, well, where does my body begin to want to move? Sometimes it's the feet, sometimes it's the hands, sometimes it's the shoulders, and sometimes it's really nothing. You'll always get a client that says, well, I'm not much of a mover, wonderful. Then maybe just tap your toes or the tip of your finger. The point is to get the client and yourself to learn the body in a different way, attuned to it, to pay attention. The second part of this invitation is to move in a non-habitual way if the client and if you are comfortable. What this means is allow your body to move in a way that it normally doesn't. So for those of you that may be belly dancers like me, I would say forget those curves, move like Ginger Rogers. And for those of you that already move like Ginger Rogers, I may say do a karate chop. And for those already doing different kinds of karate chops, I may say, well, move like a snake charmer, may move. The point is to get us out of moving in a habitual way, to get us moving in a way that our bodies are not used to. So we start to learn and pay attention to different parts. I remind my clients that there's no wrong or right way to do this. It's anything, really, it could be anything. Above all, I let them know, have fun, enjoy yourselves. So if you're up for this challenge, shoot me an email and then let me know how you're doing. Let me know about your progress, what it is that you're learning, what is it that you're unearthing in yourself. Now, if you're brave, you can also send me a video of you engaging in one of these practices. I promise I won't send it. I just always think it's, it's important for us to record a moment for ourselves. Anyway, whatever you choose to do, keep me posted. Let me know how I may support you. And above all, have fun. In the meantime, I leave you with this. Be curious, trust your body, and above all, know you are wise beyond what you give yourself credit for. Sending you a big warm hug and a kiss from California. Until next time, bye-bye.